Chapter 27, starting at verse 13. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have a soul
Well, I'd just like to say I'm glad to be here today. Amen. To see everybody, all those mom kids. <laughs> just be here to praise God. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. C42 in the red book. Okay. When upon life's pillows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. I got one. There's a fellow I went to school with. He was the same age. I'm one day older than he is. And he had to have part of his leg taken off a few days ago. He's down there with where Maria's at. He's a good friend. He's diabetic real bad. And uh, just like everybody pray for him, Lynn Brent Pike. A really good friend. stand in need of prayer um, not just us but I see other people around us a lot that they don't go to church and, and they have a need for Christ and they seem like they just don't realize it so we need to try to pray for them and set an example for those around us that are not saved Amen. Debbie would you lose that for us please Almighty Father in heaven, Lord God, we praise you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Father, for Lord allowing us to gather in your name, and Father, for bringing us here safely, Father God, Lord, to worship you, and then we praise you, Father, for the spirit you put inside our hearts, dear Lord God, to, to knowing that we're your children, Father God, and Lord, knowing that, that you've prepared a place for us, Father, and, and Lord God, we just thank you, dear Lord, for the prayer requests. We thank you, dear Lord God, for uh, those, dear Lord God, that that you have saved, dear Lord, but Lord God, we have a, a burden and a desire, dear Lord, to lead others to you, Father. And Lord God, I pray that, that you would help us, dear Lord, to be a witness and a light, Father God, to, 
uh, to those that are lost, to our family members, dear Lord, to our neighbors, uh, dear Lord, to those that we work with, Father, help us, I pray, dear Lord, let your light shine through us, Father, Lord God, that we might lead them to you, Father, and Lord God, we pray for Roger's request for his friend, Father, Lord, most of all, dear Lord God, that, he, that he's saved and that he's heart is, is right with you, Father God, Lord, and that he would find hope, dear Lord, and strength in you, Father, and Lord God, that he, you would give him encouragement, Father, knowing that, dear Lord God, that Though our outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. And that, Father, that you're going to give us a glorified body, fashioned like unto Jesus as Father. And Lord, we just praise you for that, Father God, knowing, dear Lord, that our hope is not in this life only. But that, Lord God, that we're going to walk with you in the kingdom of heaven, Father God. And Lord, that we'll walk on streets of gold that's ever so pure that it's clear, Father. Lord, I praise you for that, my Savior. Lord God, thank you for the privilege, dear Lord. Just letting the, the children, dear Lord, to, uh, to lead them through Sunday school and anointing Robin. And, and dear Lord God, helping us, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. Lord, I thank you for your word and thank you for the privilege again, dear Lord, of, of being here this morning. In Jesus' name, and amen. Amen. <coughs> Is anybody in the show
45, yeah. Autumn, you read 43, Ray. You read 44, Rusty, 45. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever, if you will be the chiefest, shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to minister unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay. All right. Now we've been talking about um, being a servant. Um, what are um, <coughs> some ways that you can be a servant? What have, what have we been doing the past few weeks? Putting others first is one. That's a way to be a servant. Um, what's another way to be a servant? Remember, we wrote them on the napkins. about consider others better than yourself. Um, yeah. What was the one we did last week? Or not last week, but the week before last. Show mercy and forgiveness. Be merciful to others. That's the way to be a servant. Okay. <clears throat> well, we're going to, um, we're going to write, I'm going to write some things up here some things that we consider to be valuable. What are some things that you have or things that you want to have? Um, like a nice car or a nice house? A punch bug? Okay. All right, Autumn wants the Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> Rusty, what's what's something that you like? Four wheeler. Okay. Ray Ray? Small four wheeler. Four wheeler time. Alright. Rusty, what do you like? Um, you like to play video games, don't you? Would you consider your video video games to be um, valuable? Autumn, what's something that you want? I know something that you want. You want to ride a horse, don't you? You want to have a horse, don't you? Okay. Okay. What are some other things? What's <laughs> something else? The things that you have <coughs> that you consider to be, you know, good possessions. Or things that you want to have. Two seater bike. Two seater bike. Okay. Swimming pool. Oh, yeah. And a nice backpack. A deck. Hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're getting going. Are you taking requests or something? Yeah. yeah. How about you, Tommy? <laughs> what would you like to have? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. We'll get a trampoline. trampoline. A trampoline. Tommy wants a trampoline. trampoline. Daddy wants a trampoline. <laughs> Okay. Anything else? Um, the Jaguar. The Jaguar. Yeah. 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 And when you guys get all this stuff, I'm going to be Oh, a boat? Yeah, a boat. That's what Papa likes. He likes boats. Yeah. We'll put in a request for him. Um, a lake. <laughs> A lake. Okay. A new finish, finish fishing hole. Mm -hmm. I kept saying finish. Fish. I just like to catch fish. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, how easy? 
easy is it to get wrapped up in all these things? Are these things really important? <coughs> Are they really important? Are they more important than Jesus? No, they're not. Um, these things sometimes can keep us away from Jesus. We can get our minds focused on these things and we can forget about Jesus. <clears throat> and we're going to... Um, to Read in um, Matthew chapter 19. This is one of the hardest lessons in being a servant yet. A lot of times we can do this and not even realize that we're doing it. Chapter 19, verse, starting at verse 16. In Matthew. Uh -huh. Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 16. Okay. Um, what the attitude this, that we're going to work on today is giving up our me attitude and having a God first attitude. Mm -hmm. We can, um, you know, put all these things first, me first. I want this, I want that, I want this. Um, instead of having a God first. God, what do you want me to do today? What, you, what do you want me to have? If you want me to have this, then I'll have it. But if not, then I won't have it. Okay. Matthew chapter 19. All right. Autumn, you start reading. 16. Mm-hmm. And behold, one came and said unto him, start reading at verse 20. So he's telling him what good things, you know, how, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, we well, need to do these things. So read what the, the, the man said. The young man says unto him, all these things have I keep from Start reading at 22. But when the young man heard of that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great potion. possessions. Possession. That said, Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall 
For we enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Yeah, keep going. Read through verse, the end of 26. <coughs> when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Okay. Was the rich young man a good person? He was a good person. He didn't, he didn't murder. He didn't commit adultery. He didn't steal. He didn't lie. Um, he honored his father and his mother. Um, he loved his neighbor as himself. So he was a good person, wasn't he? He was a good person. So what did he do that was wrong? What did he do that was wrong? He, um, he loved his possessions more than he loved Jesus. Amen. Um, is it wrong to be rich? Is it wrong to have all these things? It's not wrong to have all those things. Is it wrong to love these things more than Jesus? Yeah. Um, so what did the rich young man... No, sorry. The, he lacked the kind of love for Jesus that would give up anything. If you had all these things, and if Jesus came and said, I want you to give up all these things and move to Africa and be a missionary, you need to do what Jesus says. Amen. You need to drop all those things, and you need to move to Africa and be a missionary. You need to do what, what Jesus wants you to do. Um, this, the rich young man, he had a me-first attitude. Well, I want these things. The, this, he had a me-first attitude. He was thinking about himself and not thinking about Jesus, not putting him first. Um, now, the, the, the disciples seemed discouraged because the man, this man was a good person. Um, but Jesus said that he couldn't enter into the kingdom of heaven because he was attached to his money. How does Jesus tell them that they can conquer these attachments to their to their possessions. What does he say at the very end? He said, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Okay? Um, according to Jesus' words, these are the words that Jesus spoke. According to his words, anyone can go to heaven, but they have to let God be the one in control. Um, this story is, is kind of a sad story because he was such a good person. You know, it's, it's kind of sad to think that, you know, he, he could be such a, a good person, but he just wasn't willing to give up any, his, his possessions, his money, his, um, you know, he may have been an important person, um, you know, to give up all these things to follow Jesus. He didn't choose to have a God-first attitude. He chose to have a me-first attitude. And we need to remember this example because that me-first attitude can affect your entire eternity. You know, it can get in the way of your salvation. Okay, now last week, um, our assignment was to show mercy and forgiveness to others. Um, how were any of you all able to show mercy and forgiveness? Or to be patient, show patience towards someone. Can you think of any any way? Were you merciful or forgiving? Anybody? That's hard, isn't it? Huh? You can't remember. Well, were you um, were you patient with anybody? Anybody that was annoying you, rusty and all of them, they don't get along very well. I think it's because they're so much alike. All right. Um, okay. All right. No, if 
if any of these things keep you from Jesus, do any of these, you want to let any of these things get in your way of Jesus? No? Okay. Well, we're going to um, write on our napkins. This, your assignment this week is to give up your me first attitude and replace it with a God first attitude. Okay? That's what you're going to do this week. Every time that you pray, you can pray to God and He will help you to have a God first attitude. He'll help you if you're having um, trouble with putting things, putting possessions um, first. He'll help you because with God, all things are possible, right? Okay. Let's go over our memory verse again about being a servant. And then I'll get your napkins ready. Okay, so turn back to Mark chapter 10. What? God gave me. Mark chapter 10. Turn to Mark chapter 10. What? Mark chapter 10, starting at verse 43. 45. Yeah, do any of y'all think you can say it without looking since we've studied it for so long? But whosoever will be great, great among you shall be your chiefest, shall be your minister, shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest, shall be servant of all. For even for even the son of man came not unto and to give his life. Good job. All right. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're not gonna put any of these things first, are we? No. Hmm. Who's first? Wait. Let's get on up here and sing.
know we can still see you, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> there is really still he's invisible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Amen. Right, raise a big picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one song where we, where we sing a thing and they sing a thing? Um, I don't know if I keep doing I don't know if I keep doing All right. So we sing the first part and then they'll tell you guys and you sing the second part and we'll see who can, who can sing it, who can be louder. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I came to do, but I came to preach the So sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the sake the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him over and over. Jesus,
Jesus is God. Amen. I'm glad that Jesus was God in the flesh. Amen. You know, the rich young ruler said, called him, he said, good teacher, good master, good teacher is what he said. Jesus said, why callest thou me good? He said, just call me God. And uh, I'm glad, amen, that Jesus is my Savior, my friend, and my God. And uh, look with me, if you would, in Luke 24. Luke 24, and uh, we're going to look at some events that took place after the resurrection, and uh, we're going to look at, at one verse in Luke 24 uh, particularly, but we're going to read um, beginning at verse 33 in Luke 24. Luke 24 and, and verse 33. And this is after the, uh, the two men who were on the road to Emmaus had seen Jesus. And when they were walking with Jesus, they didn't realize it was him. And uh, he uh, expounded the scriptures beginning at uh, Moses and all the prophets uh, about concerning himself. And uh, so uh, here they had returned and uh, were telling about the things that they had, uh, that they had seen and, and what had happened. And in verse 33 it says, And they rose up the same hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus stood, himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do, do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. <coughs> and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it was written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, that tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them 
and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Let's all pray together. Father, Almighty in heaven, thank you, my Savior God, for the words that you give us, Father. Lord, your word that's forever settled in heaven. Thank you, my Savior God, for the witness inside of us, Father. Lord God, who is there this very day, Father, we praise you and we thank you for the privilege of looking at your word and for the spirit inside of us, Father, Lord, who reveals the scriptures to us. Father, I pray, help us, Lord God, Lord, to trust more wholly in Jesus. Father God, Lord, that each and every hour, each and every minute, Father, that we would lean on his everlasting arms. Father, my Savior, open our hearts and our minds. Lord God, that your word would take root deep inside this morning. Father, that we would bring fruit forth unto you this week, Father. Lord God, through what you give us. And Father, I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And amen. amen. The word tells us here that these men returned and uh, Jesus appeared before them and they thought that he was a spirit. But Jesus had flesh and bones. It wasn't just Jesus' spirit that rose from the dead. Jesus' body amen. was alive. Amen. amen. <laughs> he had conquered death. Yeah. And what a blessing. The Bible tells me in Philippians chapter 2, that we will have a body that's fashioned like unto his. A body that doesn't get sick. A body that doesn't get tired. Amen. A body that, hallelujah, that can just appear. That's what happened here. He just appeared before them. And they were shocked because he appeared right before them. Glory be to God. But he said, look at my hands and look at my feet. It's me. You know, the Bible prophesied of this in the book of Zechariah. The Bible said that they'll say unto him, what are these wounds in thy hands? And he'll say, these are they, that I was wounded in the house of my friends. He calls us friends. <laughs> what a blessing it is to have Jesus as a friend. The Bible says that Jesus told him, these are the words that I spake unto you. How many times Jesus told him that he was going to suffer and that he was going to rise the third day. How he even told the Pharisees to, to destroy this temple and I'll build it again in three days. He went on and he said, the Bible said these are the things that were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Oh, how Jesus told them to search the scriptures for in them they think they had eternal life. He said, but they are they which testify of me. Even beginning at Genesis 3.15, the Bible said that he would put enmity between Satan's seed and the woman's seed. That it would crush Satan's head and that it would bruise his heel. Bless the Lord. All through the scriptures, the word of God testifies of one thing. And that is Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And that he came to save you and me. That we could be in fellowship with him for all eternity. That's what the scriptures are about. The scriptures are about Jesus. It points us to Jesus that's what the law is. The law of Moses was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Oh, even how the rich young ruler, how he seen that he was not able to keep all of the law. He said, I've kept all of these. Jesus said, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and then come and follow me. He realized then that he was not able to keep all of the law. Oh, he kept part of it, but he couldn't keep it all. And glory be to God, he went away sorrowful. Amen. But Jesus tells us, I'm so glad that Jesus gave all for us and that Jesus gave his life all for us on a cross that we can be saved through him. And glory be to God, I'm so glad that Jesus gave all. The Bible says that he opened their, their minds, that they, their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and that it would behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. Why? So that repentance and remission of sins would be preached among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. He said, and ye are witnesses of these things. You know, that is what God is looking for.
looking for today. God is looking for witnesses. The Bible says that, that, uh, that, that he hath the witness in himself. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Son of God has the witness in himself. The witness is the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there the day that they crucified my Savior. He was there and raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says in Romans 8 that the Spirit of Christ that, uh, that raised Him from the dead dwells in you. He shall quicken our mortal bodies. He'll raise us from the dead. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm glad the Bible says that we'll not pre prevent the dead, but they'll rise first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, the graves are going to open. And their bodies are going to meet their spirit in the air. Amen? The Bible says that the absent from the Lord is the, the, the body is to be present with the Lord. When we die, our spirit goes, and it's with the Lord. But one day, these graves are going to open. Amen? And the bodies are going to meet their spirit in the air, and they're going to have a glorified body fashioned like unto Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. The Bible says that Jesus said, Ye are witnesses of these things. God's not looking for lawyers. Those who, who, who may be able to tell all about the Word of God. Who may be able to, that's what a lawyer was in the day when Jesus would, when they would contend with Jesus. A lawyer was someone who had studied the law. God's not looking for lawyers. God's not looking for Pharisees. God's not looking for religious folks. God is looking for witnesses. Amen. You know what a witness does? He tells what he's seen. He tells what he has experienced. He tells what God has done in his life. Amen. That's what God's looking for. Amen. That's what a testimony is. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me when I was a lost sinner. That glory be to God. That's what a witness is. Let me tell you what Jesus, how who Jesus is. Let me tell you how he walks with me and he talks with me. How he tells me I'm his own. Oh, glory be to God. That's a witness. He said, ye are these witnesses of these things. And behold, I send you the promise. I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. This is the scripture that we're going to look at this morning. And where he said, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. This promise that God gives. You know, I'm so glad that God cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. When God makes a promise, brother, it happens. All of the promises of God in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, are yea and amen. That means that every promise from God in Christ Jesus is yes. That it will happen. It will happen. And, what's, what's the, and, and glory be to God, I'm glad... For God's word to help us to see that there are conditions to the promise. There are conditions to the promises of God. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yea and amen. It doesn't just say all the promises of God are yea and amen. It says in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's why the God so God tells us in His Word in, in John chapter eight when Jesus was talking to the, to the to those that believed on Him, He said, "If ye if ye continue in My Word, then are ye My disciples indeed. If then, and He says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." Oh, they said to Him, they said, "Oh Lord, we've never been in bondage to any man." How sayest thou that, that we should be made free? And he says, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. They were, they were looking at it in a carnal sense instead of looking at it that Christ was trying to point them to himself to make them free. The Bible says here, I send the promise of my Father upon you. I'm so glad that he doesn't promise something and then it not happen. So we'll look at the promise and see what this promise is in Galatians chapter 3, if you'll turn with me. 
Because it's always so much better to see the Bible, see the Word of God for yourself, amen, than, than to hear it uh, from another man, amen. I'm so glad that the Word of God uh, helps us uh, in our, and, and that it's the anointing that, that we have received that helps us uh, to see the Word of God. And I'm so glad, amen, that he even told us in the book of Galatians that we have no need uh, that another man teach us, amen, but the anointing which ye have received, the same teacheth you, and shall show you all things. You have received an unction from the Holy One, is what the Bible says. So it's good to see the Word of God uh, for yourself. The Bible says in Galatians uh, uh, chapter 3, and beginning at uh, uh, verse 13, he says that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise. Amen? He said, The promise of my Father shall come upon you, is what Jesus said in Luke 24. He said, but behold, the promise of my Father shall come upon you. He says that the Gentiles, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we see that there's a promise here, the promise of the Spirit. And what does the Spirit, what does the Spirit do? Well, look, first off, the Bible tells us right here to begin with that Jesus, that Christ, redeemed us from the curse of, of the law. The law, brother, cannot justify any man. Doing good does not justify any man because the law is not of faith. Amen? The law is not of faith. It, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 and 6, with, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that believeth, uh, uh, believeth must uh, come to him and to believe that he is. It's impossible to, 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 to please God without faith. So Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. When they took that crown of thorns, they didn't realize that they were fulfilling the scriptures. The Bible said in Genesis that cursed is the ground for thy sake. It'll be infested with thorns and thistles. So they took a crown of thorns and they placed it on my Savior's head. And he bore the curse for you and me when he was on the cross. That's why one of the reasons it was necessary for Jesus to go to the cross is so that he could bear our curse. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. He was made a curse for us because it's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might through, receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. This is what God has promised. Pro God has promised us the blessing of Abraham. This is why it's so important to see the Scriptures for what they are. It's so important to, 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 to search the Scriptures for Jesus, what God has promised us in Jesus. Because, brother, it encourages our faith. It strengthens us and it encourages us because when the tempter comes, I can say, devil, this is what God said. That's exactly what Jesus did when he was tempted in the wilderness. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the Satan would come in to command that these rocks be made into bread if you're the son of God. He says, man shall not live by bread alone. Hallelujah. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus quoted scripture. You know, he quoted Deuteronomy more than any other book in the Bible, Jesus did. Deuteronomy was what he quoted. That was from Deuteronomy. The Bible right there in, 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 in uh, uh, Galatians chapter 3 where it says, For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. It's Deuteronomy 20 and 21. It is cursed. A man is cursed who is hanged on a tree. Jesus was hung on a cross to fulfill Scripture. It wasn't just an accident. It wasn't just a, a reason, uh, it wasn't just a, uh, that it just happened that way. It was prophesied thousands of years before it ever happened. It was prophesied that Jesus, that he would be hanged on a tree. Amen. So if we look at the promise, the blessing of Abraham is all the way back 
in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, we see the promise. So we're trying to understand where, what the promise is. Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. I send the promise of my Father upon you. This is what he was telling them the day that he had, that before he went to heaven, he says, I'm going to send a promise. Amen. And so the, the promise we understand is that the, the Spirit through faith, we receive the Spirit through faith in what Christ has done. In Genesis chapter 12, the, the, we see the promises that God gave Abraham. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, in, in verse 1, The Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Glory be to God. The Bible told us right here that this is a, this is a promise. This is a, a covenant that God made with Abraham. So we see, uh, what do we see first? The Bible tells us first for him that he is to get out of his country and from his kindred and from his father, the father's house unto a land that he would show him. First of all, God wanted to take Abraham and make him a, give him a new family and make him a new man. He wanted to make him part of a new family and a new man. The Bible tells us about how that Abraham's family were idol worshipers. They lived in a, in a land of idol worshipers. And glory be to God, God said, I want to separate you from that. I want to make you a new man. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. So God takes us and he makes us a man. Amen. We're no longer, uh, uh, that's what the Bible tells us, that uh, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife. So God takes and he makes us a new family. Amen. In his, in his family, that's what he wanted to do with Abraham. He wanted to make him a new man and a new family. The Bible said in 2 Samuel 10 and 6 that the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Amen. That's what the Spirit of God will do. It'll turn you into another man. Amen. You'll no longer be the man that you used to be. You'll no longer be the sinner that you used to be. Oh, brother, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, amen, that God doesn't just leave me as a sinner when I came to Him. He didn't just leave me a filthy, rotten sinner, but He changed me, and He made me a new man. That's what one of the promises, amen, that the, that the promise that God, the Bible said, that would come upon us. He wants to give us a new country and a new land. That's what it said here, unto a land that I will show thee. Amen. If you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11, we can learn a little bit more about uh, Abraham. Oh, bless the Lord. I'm so glad uh, for the word of God. Aren't you glad for the word of God? How that it, uh, God confirms things. Amen. All throughout his word. Uh, the Bible says that in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which after for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in a land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with the hymn of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So glory be to God. Uh, and God said, I've got, I got a new land for you to, go, to be a, a looking for. i got a new land for you to be sojourning and, a, and, a, and a, on a pilgrimage towards you. Amen. God said, go leave the land that you're at and come to a new land. Amen. I'm so glad for heaven. I'm so glad for what God's prepared for us. Amen. I'm so glad that if I had uh, hope of Christ in this life only, I would be of all men most miserable. I'd be a miserable man, I tell you, that today. Yeah. I wouldn't have a smile on my face. I wouldn't laugh. I'd be a miserable poke in the mud, I tell you. But glory be to God, I'm looking for a city which has foundations, Amen. whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Yeah. Oh, brother, glory be to God. This is a promise. 
us that God has given you through the Spirit. Hallelujah. This is a blessing that He has that He has promised you. What a what a blessing. The Bible tells us that that uh, that all these folks, all the the uh, folks like Abraham, they all died in faith, having not received the promises, but seen them afar off. And they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Oh, that's what the lesson taught us this morning. Being mindful of the country from whence we came out. Looking at those things. that God said, set your affection on things above and not on things below. Amen. He says, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. Amen. God told Abraham, leave your family. I'm going to make you a new family. I'm going to make you a new man. Hallelujah. I'm going to take you to a new land. Hallelujah. And he says, he says, and, uh, uh, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. Mm -hmm. You know what? There's no greater blessing than to get a blessing from God. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. That's why Jesus taught. Yeah. He said, when you do your alms, you go into a closet. Mm -hmm. And you don't, don't do your alms before men to be seen of them, but you enter into a closet and you do your alms in secret. And your Father will reward you openly. Hallelujah. You know what you do in secret? God will reward you openly. Oh, you don't do something to help somebody to be seen. And say, look what I did. Oh, verily I say unto you, you have your reward. But glory be to God, you do thanks toward God. Because you love your heavenly Father. And you do it in secret. You know what? God will reward you openly. The Bible said right there that he said, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. Brother, I'd take a blessing from God any day. Amen. Amen. Above what man can give. Right. God desires to bless us. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28. You want to see some of the blessings of God and hearkening unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Oh, brother, glory be to God. There is nothing like walking in fellowship and in obedience to God Almighty. Deuteronomy 28 says that if thou sh it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. That's what the Bible said there in Hebrews 11 and 6. It says that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Do you diligently seek God? Let me ask you, do you diligently seek God? Now this, that, remember the rich young ruler came to Jesus and he came and he, he said, good master, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal? He was seeking God. But when he heard what God's commandment was, he didn't want to hearken. That's what the scripture said. It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. As the psalmist wrote, he says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. As James put it, James said, uh, and let us not be hearers of the word only, but doers also, thus deceiving your own self. Don't be a hearer of the word only. Oh, brother, brother, it's good to hear. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's great to hear the word of God. But if you only hear and you don't do, then it doesn't happen. It can't happen. If thou shalt hearken diligently, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and deserve and do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. How would you like to be overtaken by the blessings of God? How would you like to just be overwhelmed? You know what David said? David said, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Amen. How would you like to just run over, just be overflowed with the blessings of God? I tell you, you can't outgive Him. And you can't outgive Him. Glory be to God. 
He says, All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Uh, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, uh, and the fruit of thy cattle, and in the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket, basket in thy store, and blessed shalt thou be uh, when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Uh, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten uh, before thy face, and they shall come against thee one way, and shall flee seven ways. God said when the enemy comes against you, well, he didn't say he's not going to come against you. But when he comes against you, he'll take and he'll run seven different ways. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says? To draw nigh unto God. And he'll draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Hallelujah. That's a promise from God. And God will honor his promises. The Bible says the Lord shall establish thee as a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. You know the Bible says in Ezekiel 36 that God will take that heart of stone out of us and he'll give us a new heart, a heart of flesh, flesh that can feel. And he'll take a new spirit and he'll put that new spirit within us and he'll cause us to walk in his commandments. Hallelujah. As Jeremiah said, uh, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see. Ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. It's so good to rest in Jesus. It's so good. It's such a blessing. Amen. And brother, I want you to know that just because God's going to bless you, God, will, God has promised to bless you, it doesn't mean that the enemy will not come and will not tempt you. But you can look to the Word of God and God will deliver you. I, he said, I will set him on high because he has known my name. God will deliver you when the enemy comes and he tempts you and he tries to get you to go astray. God will give you the strength Amen. to walk in the path that he has determined Amen. for you to go in. Amen. He'll make you great. He'll provide for you and he'll make you great just as he promised Abraham. Oh, how Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field, how they toll not, neither do they spin. Oh, brother, in the second half of that scripture is such a blessing because if you look at Solomon, how that when Solomon built the temple, oh, brother, it was beautiful. There were pillars uh, of brass 30 feet tall. There was ivory and gold work all around. Brother, that they had put work, labored and labored and labored uh, and spent uh, um, uh, probably millions or billions of dollars compared to today's wealth. Building this temple. Yeah. And brother, the Bible said that when he slaughtered the, 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 the sacrifices, that the Shekinah glory of God came and it filled the temple. Mm -hmm. Brother, so that the priests couldn't even stand before it. It was so bright and it was so beautiful. And you know what the Bible said? Wherefore, God, it says, uh, and he said, Behold, I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these lilies of the field. He said, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Glory be to God. Uh, that's what the Bible, uh, that's what the Bible, that's what he told him. He says that the, that the, the promise of the Father uh, shall come upon you, and ye shall be endued. That means clothed upon. That's what it means. It means clothed upon. Endued means to be clothed upon. Glory be to God. You know what? That same, the Bible says that in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, that if this, the ministry of condemnation be glory, the ministry of condemnation is the law, which Solomon was, was sacrificing the sacrifices under. If the ministry of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. And the brother Moses, when he came down from Mount Sinai, had to wrap a towel around his head because he had been in the presence of the glory of God. And glory, hallelujah, that same glory lives inside of you and me. That same spirit, that same Shekinah glory, hallelujah. If, 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 if God, uh, the Bible said, Jesus told us, consider the lilies. He said, consider the lilies. They told not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Amen. Isn't it good? 
to be clothed with Jesus. Amen. 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 He'll forth, the fourth promise from Abraham is he'll make you a blessing to others. He said, thou shalt be a blessing. You know, there's nothing. And brother, you know, self-centered, self-centered lives are miserable lives. Yeah. It is a miserable way to live. But brother, when you can be a blessing to somebody else, I'm telling you, that's where you, you can get happy being a blessing to somebody. <laughs> Amen. That's what David said. David, David wanted to be a blessing. And he went out there and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of the living God? Amen. And he said, now, glory be to God. Uh, uh, the Bible told us that, uh, that, that David said when, his brother, when he came there and his brother said, we know the naughtiness of your heart. You kids come out here to see the battle. David said, is there not a cause? Isn't there a cause? You know, brother, one of the greatest things you can have in your life is a cause outside of yourself. The cause of God. David David said, is there not a cause? Amen. And David went and warred against the Philistines. He didn't do it for himself. He did it because God had, a, had given him the option to go and do that. You know what? God's got the same desire for each and every one of us. You know, his purpose is greater than any purpose in this world. To reach the lost. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said there back in, in, in Luke chapter 24. Uh, Jesus said that this gospel would be preached in all nations. All nations. You know, God has given us the witness to tell the world who Jesus is. There's conditions to this promise. There's conditions to these promises. Jesus said it in, in just one verse. He gave the conditions. Number one was for them to tarry. Number, number one was for them to tarry. He said, you wait. You wait here. You wait here in Jerusalem. And that was the condition number one. Condition number two was until ye be endued with power from on high. So number one was that they had to wait. You know, brother, uh, we might read that and it might seem easy. It might seem easy. And it's easier than it sounds because it's our nature to want things to happen now. I want it to happen now. It's just, it's just, it's just the nature of man. Yeah. Is that we want things to happen immediately. And if it don't happen immediately, then we get, then we pout, and 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 we, uh, well, well, it, it, well, I just might as well just give up. See, that's the nature of man. If we look at Psalm 37, it's a blessing because Psalm 37 tells us. To fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither to be envious against the workers of iniquity, that they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the, as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth eat wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Those that wait on God. You see, that's, that's something that it was probably pretty hard for Peter, I would say. Peter was, boy, he was passionate for the Lord. I mean, Peter was very eager to, to protect the Lord. Remember, he was the one that drew out the sword and cut Malchus's ear off. He was very eager and passionate for the Lord. I'd say it was probably hard for Peter to tarry and to wait. But he said, tarry and wait. And I'm so glad, amen. I'm so glad that God's not in a hurry. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God's not anxious? Aren't you glad that, that if something doesn't happen right away, that's in God's will, that God doesn't say, well, I wonder if it's really going to happen. I wonder if it'll really come to pass. God's not up here wringing his hands, anxious and wondering if it's really going to happen. 
Oh boy, is this really going to... No, that's not God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And brother, he, he, God is in control. God is on the throne. And God, glory be to God, hallelujah. He, he knows what's going to come to pass. The second condition of the promise was until ye be endued with power from on high. You see, and we can read, I'm so thankful that we can read and, and, and see the day that they were endued with power from on high. It was 50 days after, G after Passover, Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit came in as a mighty rushing wind. I asked my wife the other day, I said, how long did it, how long did it take God to take 11 disciples? And there was another one added in place of Judas later on. You can read about it in the book of Acts. But how long did it take God to take 12 men and to build a church? It took him 50 days. 50 days because that's when the church started. And brother, there was 3,000 saved on that day. They were endued with power. That word, that word power, is, uh, it's the same word if we look in the Greek. It's dynamis. It's dynamis. It's where we get the word dynamite from. It's God's power. It's God's dynamite power that they were endued with. Not from this world, but they were endued with power from on high. It was a divine, a godly, a dynamite power. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad that he said until, until, that word, that one little word, all, every single word in the word of God is so significant. He said you tarry until, until. So that means that once you are endued with this power, then you use the power. Then you walk in the power. Oh, glory be to God. Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that worketh in us. To Him be the glory forever and ever. That power works in you and I. That, that very same power that they were endued and clothed upon, it works within us. Brother, the, the, the condition of the promise was that once they're endued with the power, then they must use the power. They must allow it to work freely in their lives. It's the same today. God's promises have not changed. Aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad they haven't changed? Amen. His promises are still the same. The conditions are still the same. And behold, I am the Lord. I change not. Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and forever. The Bible says in Matthew 25 and verse 29, For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. God wants to bless you, not just a little bit, not just a tiny bit, but he says, I am come. He said, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. Jesus told us here in Matthew 25, For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But to him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. So brother, if God gives us the precious gift of his Holy Spirit, God gives us the precious gift of His Word and the enlightenment of His the revelation of Jesus Christ. God didn't do that to just for it to happen one day and then we walk away and we go right back into the muck and the filth and the mire. Right back into the sin and, 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 the, and the, the things of this world and taking heed to the things. God didn't do it for that reason. God did it to that He would have us to walk in His light. And amen, the Bible says uh, that uh, in, in Philippians 1 and 6 that we are to be confident of this very thing that He that hath begun a good work in you that He will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know what today is? Today, when, when we look at the Bible, then when we see it, it says that today, it's not necessarily talking about one day. It's talking about the times that we are in. Today is the day of salvation. That's what we're in right now. We're in the day of salvation. This is the time to be saved. But brother, there's coming a day, and it's the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. And every knee is going to bow. The things under the earth 
Things on the earth and the things above the earth are going to bow to him. Even those that will spend eternity in hell will bow before his blessings. You see, God... God has endued us with power that it might be used for his glory. That we might go and tell the world who Jesus is. That we might take, that we might take what God gives us and lead a poor lost soul to him. For him to save them. Paul said in Romans 1 and 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power that's the power until you do be endued with power from on high. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Everyone that believeth. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. They were endued with power. If you're here and you have been saved, you have been endued with power from on high. That same power that filled the temple. That same, very same power and even more glorious. Even more glorious. Brother, I'm so glad what God has promised us comes to pass. I'm so glad that he has promised to make us a new man. Make us a new family. Give us a new land. Make us a blessing and to bless us if we'll take heed to what he has promised. If we'll walk in what he has promised, God will fulfill his part. I guarantee you God will go back on his part. If anyone fails, it's you and I. God never fails. He never has. And he will perform his good word toward us. Let's all pray together. Father, Lord, I praise you ever so much, Father. Lord, for who you are. Lord, that you are the, the, the exact definition of integrity. Father, that everything you do, your character is perfect. That, Father God, Lord, that you always honor what you tell us, Father. And, Lord God, I pray, help us to see where we fail. Help us to see, dear Lord God, where we have fought, dear Lord Jesus, even as you made the rich young ruler to be able to see what was wrong within him. Father, help us to see our errors, that dear Lord God, that you might correct us. For Father, you told us that, if, that you love those that you correct. And dear Lord God, that you want us to walk in the blessing of, that you have given us. Uh, Father, even the same blessing that you gave Abraham, Father, because of Jesus, my Savior. Father, thank you for that. I praise you for that, Father. Lord God, I ask you today, Lord, as your child, Father, help each and every one. Help from the very youngest to the very oldest in here, dear Lord God, that we would hearken unto the voice of you, Father, diligently. Father God, Lord, if we have gotten to a place to where we no longer hear that, Father God, Lord, that we would earnestly seek to be in your will and in your fellowship. Father, thank you for that. Thank you for the promise, dear Lord, that you have given us. Thank you, dear Lord, for what you gave the disciples in that day to begin your church. And dear Lord God, we give you all the praise for Father God, Lord, the things that you will accomplish in Jesus' name. And amen. Does anybody have a song that you'd like to sing? Uh, I want to encourage you to pray this morning if you have a prayer on your heart, if you need if you need help from the Lord, and all of us need help, I want to encourage you to come and pray. The altar is always open to whosoever will. Why don't we sing, I have so decided to follow Jesus? I don't know uh, if it's in any book, but I'm not sure we can manage. Oh, uh -huh. 
behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, though none go with me, still I will follow, though none go with me, still I will follow, though none go with me, still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. <coughs> Anybody have anything that you want to add? I'm so thankful for Roger and Maria being here this morning. Mm -hmm. They're anxious to praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Jim, would you lead us, please? Praise, praise the Lord! Lord. Praise, praise mercy and good friend!